Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. This week on Fixing South Sudan, the Council of Ministers orders a headcount of all public service employees. What does all this mean? How will the assignment be carried out? When will it be carried out and why? And is the headcount a step towards the much-hyped civil service reforms? Is it a good idea for fixing Sasuran? With us in the program is Honorable General Jemis Holtmai, the Minister of Labor, Public Service and Human Resource. It's our pleasure to welcome him to fixing Sasuran for the first time in his office. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you very much. So we talk of a headcount. The Council of Ministers has announced it. What is a head count? What are we counting? Can you break it down for our audience? Thank you very much, Nadine uh, and thank you Fixing Sound Sudan programs. Uh, through you, let me say it, Happy New Year and for, uh, prosperous 2019 to all Sound Sudanese who are in the country and outside the country. And uh, it is my pleasure to, uh, to welcome you into to my office. Yeah, welcome to the program. Yes, and yes. we are talking about uh, uh, your Ministry of Labor, very sensitive ministry, and you are coming up with this idea of counting civil servants. What is what is it all about? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was appointed uh, uh, as a Minister of Labor, Public Service and Human Resource Development in uh, August last year. And uh, my program then I came to the ministry was to know exactly what are the problems uh, with respect to public services in the government of South Sudan. And for me to start my program, I have to diagnose what are the programs. So I started with uh, having consultation with all my staff, starting from my duty minister to advisor, to under secretaries and all the departments. We have 11 departments. I consulted them one by one and came up with all the problems that are facing the public service in the Republic of South Sudan. And we said as a management, uh, senior management team to ask them, these are the problems and where do we start? Because we have to work as a team. And then we came up that before we do anything, we have to know our human resource, our manpower working in South Sudan. Are they there? Are they qualified? What? That's why we came up with this idea of before doing anything, we have to make a head count so that we know what do we have in terms of people, in terms of institutions, we want to know. That's why we came up with this program. And what we are looking at, we have roughly about 58 institutions from ministry to commissions and to authorities. Those institutions are established by law, and law gave them a certain number of employees. One, what we want to look at is to know whether the number of 
employees given by law are there or not, more or less. We want to know. And after that, we have to make job description. What is that job requiring? And then job specification, because that job needs a certain skills, certain grade, certain qualification needed. Then we will see those who are really occupying that office. Are they meeting the requirement of that office? We will put it and then we will see the age wise because uh, we, 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 we have been actually holding people in one position for more than 10 years without promotion. We have only in and there is no way out. So for us, it is part of, of course, a public service reform of the country. And even in the agreement there, we have to reform the public service. And this is the whole idea. After that, now we will come up with when we know the position that we need. Now we will advertise, we have to recruit, we have to create job for our young people, young generation. From the start, you need information. You need to know. And how do you go about doing it? Now we have uh, formed 10 committees and we divide it the ministries and commissions plus authorities into 10 committees, 10 groups. Each group is about 1,400 according to the payroll we have here in, in the ministry. We will give them seven or ten people to look into. We have a time of reference, as I said before. We are looking at the job themselves and those who are occupying the jobs. We have certain time of reference that we are going to look at. So we divide them into groups and then this group will work simultaneously and uh, without uh, any problem. We are drawing actually our uh, team. We, will take, uh, we are actually taking from our learning institutions, the University of Juba and other uh, colleges. We will take people from there and then we will take uh, people of course from ministries, different ministries. Not everybody, but we have certain people that we need. Those who will really give us the correct information, those who really know the technical know-how of the human resource. We will take them and put them together, and then they will give us the information that we need. It sounds simple to do, but this is a very difficult task. You have people who are scattered across the country and also in other countries. So it's not a simple thing to do. It's very ambitious. And will you do it? Yes, it's not simple. There is nothing uh, free, Madingo. There is nothing free. Even for you to come and interview me, it's not free. You have to pay for it. You see, it is need time, need resources. But we are determined to do that. We are determined to do that. It's not free. It's difficult, but it's doable. Why are you doing it? And why now? Ah, yes. Why I'm doing it is because really we want to reform the public service. We have so many issues. Now we are talking of corruption in the country. We are talking of human rights. We are talking of transparency. We are talking of nepotism. You call them, this son of Zoom, you call them. There is no way you will combat all those things without putting a right institution in place where you will have laws and regulation being implemented and then you will be able really to, 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 to minimize corruption. And always I say minimizing because corruption <laughs> is, is, is a very dangerous disease where you need to really to phase it out slowly. Okay? So it is now because everything has its own time. Yes, it was done by my previous uh, ministers who came here. I think it was done in 2008. There was that headcount. And now after... Uh, Almost 11 years we are doing it again. So it is now, this is a time for us to reform the public service. It is a good time for us really implementing the fees agreement because without fees also you will not, you will not be able to implement anything. We are doing it in two phases. Phase one is to deal with the national governments and the phase two is going to the state. Without security you will not be able to go to the state. And, and we thought that this is the right time for us to do it. We want really to create jobs. 
for our people. It seems like you are, you are taking it in doses, you want a piecemeal approach, but this thing needs a holistic change. Some people say to change civil service, you need an overhaul. That you start from scratch. Maybe politically it's not doable, but in terms of making sure there is vibrant civil service, you need more than just a piecemeal approach. Yeah, I think for us to make sure that we are doing a good job, because South Sudan is vast, it's very big, and we, do, we want to do it so that actually we, are, we have to make sure that we are, we are, we are doing the right thing and we are, we are serious to do it. Now, if you are talking of, that's why we say it, we have to have phase one and phase two. Phase one is to deal with the center. By doing so, we are learning, because this is the head of everything. We are learning also, there may be some uh, irregularity somewhere, where when we go to the state, it is going to be very easy. Second one, as I said, you see through implementing the, this peace agreement, the security situation will will actually be improved and we may have resources for us to do it. Now even for it is a big work. You even know that the, even the resources even the resources that you want to do it just yes, it is holistic. But holistic also you have to do it also in phases. This phase one so that uh, you don't want just to stretch out and then come back with your empty hand without doing anything. So I think it is holistic. We are going to to make reforms for the whole public service, including private sector. Uh, the common issue that people talk about is that the salaries are not being paid. And is that part of uh, your strategy to ensure that you probably reduce the workforce? I mean, the, the results are not out, but you, we, we can sort of predict uh, some of the areas we are dealing with. You have some ghost workers, you may find them, some dead workers, even some people have rebelled, some people have migrated, and they are still in the payroll. And your ministry is a ministry that reflects what is wrong with South Sudan. You pointed out nepotism. The other issue is, is meritocracy is not being given a chance. The right person in the right place. So where do you start on this? Is that going to change? the issue of salaries not being paid. Yes, uh, our uh, prediction is that uh, we are going to, uh, we, we, are, we will recover some money, because as you probably put it, in the public service we have ghost name, we are paying people who, uh, who have died 10 years ago or 15 years ago that are still in the, the payroll. We are paying people who are in the United States, in Australia, in Canada, all over the world, in Kenya, where they are still in our, uh, uh, pay system. We have people who have gone for studies, leave, they have never come back, and their names are still there. So at the end of the day, when we finish, we were recovered money. And that money, it will help actually the Minister of Finance to be able to pay our salaries uh, regularly, really. Yeah. And so it is part of that, that reform. And, that, that's and a we good. Have to make sure, we have to make sure that we have a very qualified manpower. Quality is important than quantity. We are not talking about of quantity. We want a quality of public service. You are going to be rigorous about this. Of course. You are a general. Well, and we uh, will implement the orders. No, we. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to use a. Uh, Civil service, uh, military is, is, is a public service, service actually institution. But you will leave no stone unturned. Yeah, of course, of course. We have to do that because even public service here, they have rules and regulations. I'm the head of the uh, public, uh, of the, this ministry. It is my duty to make sure that everything is implemented. Change must come to South yes, Sudan. Change, yes. By all change, means necessary. Change is in, in, uh, inevitable. You will, not, you will not actually stand against change. Never. Change and death are prerequisite of life. You will not, Madin or of yesterday is not Madin or of today. <laughs> so you have to change. If you don't want to change, change will change you. Let's take a break from here.
Welcome to Dolku Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, event management, passport photo, stand-up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dolku Media Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adengor and with us is Honorable General Jemith Hothmai, the Minister of Labor, Public Service and Human Resource. And we speak about the headcount. And welcome back to the show. Thank you. When we talk about fixing South Sudan, it is something you have an idea about. You were a liberator at a very young age. You fought for this country to bring it where it is. Now, the next fight is nation building. Can South Sudan be fixed? Yes, it is possible. It is possible. We, uh, we took up arms very, very long time ago. It did not start actually in uh, 1955, is before it. South Sudan, they have been struggling for freedom uh, where they will govern themselves. And it is serious that South Sudan is fixable. We will fix it. It is a matter of time, yes. As, uh, as you know, we have been at war for more than 60 years. And, and now war has become a culture of our people. So people, you need to take them from culture of war into culture of peace and, and development. And for you to go there, it is a process. For with us, it's not easy, it's not a common sense. Yes, we just came out from the war. And, and our mindset, we need to change it gradually. In the context of your ministry, you have a situation where every ministry is dominated by the people of that ethnic group. And that is part of what needs to change. So when we speak about sweeping reforms in your ministry, you are starting now with a headcount. But to fix South Sudan, will require more than that, and political will, is it there? Well, uh, political is there, that's why you had uh, last Friday that the Council of Ministers have passed their resolutions, giving us go ahead, that is alone is a political will, so we have secured it, the political will is there, and for us to answer your question whether uh, we are going to reshuffle people who are uh, having position uh, in the ministry from one ethnic group. As I said before, we need quality, not quantity. But that question will be answered by what we are doing. Because what will happen is that we will make the headcount. From there we will know actually the vacancies that we, 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 we have. And we will have a very transparent uh, recruitment, whereby it will be announced, people will come, and job listing is there, and it is open for all South Sudanese, irrespective of our color or our gender or whatever. All right? So now we are not going to say that if a certain ethnic group have no person who is not uh, have no person who qualify for the job. Uh -huh. Do you think that we are going to bring it because now it is from that isn't it, Guru? No. We have to work, as I said, quality is the must for this country. Because what we are looking for is the service to our people. Let me understand the implications of what you just said, that once you identify the number of workforce, uh, you are going to put out job advertisements. Does it mean that every position uh, you would have to rehire the person based on qualifications. Yes. There will be screenings yes. and anyone who is fit will stay, stay in their position. Yes. Those who are not fit will go where? Yeah, well, those who are not fit... Uh... And, and let's say the elderly who are uh, of punishable age, what's going to happen to them? Uh, no, with the pension, of course, there's no problem. We are now working and, and uh, uh, setting up actually the office of the pensions. And by the end of this month, we are looking forward to pay, to start paying the pension. 
if we manage to do this in the, in this month, then now we are going now to pension those who are pensionable, and we will pay the money there. There is no problem. Uh, we will pay them, and by doing so, if you pension people, we have people who have been actually in in one place for more than ten years. Now we are going to promote, and that will give us also a room for us to now to recruit our. Uh, uh, the, the new uh, new recruitment from the from the job. Now we are looking also in the public service. We have people who have been in consolidated pay for more than ten years. We want to see what does and that mean? People who are not actually uh, 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 who have not been confirmed by public service uh, in the public service. So the ministers are keeping some of them as a consolidated. They are doing their work there, but they are not confirmed. And, uh, in public service, and they are receiving salaries. So we want to see also, because some people also, they are disadvantaged of that. Some people are qualified and then they can be confirmed into now, they will not benefit even in, in promotions, because they are not public servant uh, employees and consolidated, doing work, uh, it is a temporary work. So, but some people who are really qualified, we have to confirm them. So, uh, Pension will be there, we will promote and we will recruit. So, and this is what we are looking at. The pension will be there and we are very serious that we have to, we have to give them pension. These are people who have really served the country for more than, more, over 40 years. There's an interesting fact here. Yeah. There was a time when working for government was attractive and then during the crisis from 2013 onwards, everyone has flocked to the NGOs. So, pay is a major issue. When you talk about quality, you have to attract quality servants. And that means you must do something about the salary structure. Yeah, as, uh, it's also as you might have heard also that the Council of Ministers has passed a resolution for uh, formation of committee to revise the salary structure. Uh, what we have now, we don't have a unified salary structure, which is a real problem. And the second one is that People have been actually, uh, with our economy, uh, it's, it's difficult for people to, to meet the basic uh, need of their uh, families. So we are working on that and we will make, the, we will make public service attractive again uh, for our talent people to, to join in the public service. Yes, it is a, is a problem, delaying in the payment of the salaries is another is a problem and what we have now is not enough giving the uh, the, the the rocket uh, <laughs> rises of the sky rocket of, 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 prices. of the prices in the mm. market mm. so we are considering that there is a committee a technical committee that will work uh, to see into it uh, our uh, our workers life is, is improved People are really upset about the fact that politicians talk and they talk beautifully, but nothing gets done. Why should they believe you that what you are saying and what the government is saying is going to be implemented from uh, coming from the army and then now into this ministry? What is distinctive about you that will make you follow through with the goals? Yes, I don't want them to believe on us just in vacuum they will see the result. What they need is the result, not, not looking at the MSOs or someone who has been in, in the bush for more than 20 years or 30 years. No, they will get the result and I'm sure that they will get the result. And what so will be the result? You, you, you paint a rosy picture, assume that you have achieved all your goals, what are we likely to have in place? Yeah, we will have a place we, if, if that committee comes with the recommendations that we increase the salaries, we will do that. All right, because also it has something to do with our GDP, our money, availability of money. What do we have? All right, we will increase and they will see. Now we will work to, for them to get their salaries monthly. You do our work, 30 days we give you your money. Okay? This is what they want. All right? So they will see. I don't want to tell them that I'm different from anybody. I'm a human being. But I'm really working to make sure that the standard of living of our people is, is improved. And for you to improve it, 
it is also through their salaries. You increase their salaries, they get their salaries in time. That, that's it. So they will see the result. I don't want them to believe me in Baku. They will see. Now they will judge themselves, not, not me saying that. Uh, no, they will, they will see. And I'm serious that uh, uh, we have to implement this. As I said before, the, the political will is there. It's in the Council of Ministers, who is shared by the President. Of giving the, the okay, then that we have secured the political will. So they will work with us, with this ministry, to make sure that uh, everything is implemented. My colleague in the cabinet, the uh, uh, actually assure us that they will cooperate with us. So I don't think that there is uh, there is difficult. Our difficulty is economy is a different thing. So are you not jumping ahead of uh, yourself because? Aren't you supposed to wait until all South Sudanese come back, including those who have rebelled and who would likely be affected by the headcount, for you to do the headcount in a fair way? Or do you say, let's just start with those who are here and then we continue with those who are not there here? No problem. It will not affect, uh, it will not affect anybody because now what, I don't know what the agreement is there. An agreement has talked about uh, reform in public service. We will take the agreement. If the agreement say we are going to return those who were in public service, we will do it. They will be there, they will have the, that benefit. Okay. What we will not do is that we are not going to bring somebody from nowhere. You see? From nowhere. Uh, because we have a rule and uh, procedures uh, in the public service. So I don't think that uh, there is no problem. What we will see what the agreement is saying about those who have rebelled, those who will come, and then, and then we will take care of that one. So this is the right time. There is no another time. This is the right time for us to start reforming the public service. And on corruption, people are brought to this ministry because of who they know, not what they know. You think that is going to change? Yes. And even when change. you know the size of your workforce, it needs some, some people talk about digitalization. Yes. That is a way of verifying. But otherwise, the issue of ghost workers will continue to be there. We are considering that. We are considering the biometric. We are considering it. We are working on it now. Through this headcount, we will also digitalize our uh, payroll. Will you fix our Sudan? Yes. It's not totally, but I will do my part because it's not the public service that will fix the whole South Sudan. But we will do our part. And other ministers will do their part. Madingor will do his part. And then now, when we put it together, I think we will do 100%. But as public service, human resource and labor, we are going to do our part to make sure that the South Sudan is fixed. Will South Sudan fix you? Uh, it will fix me because now they have to guide me. South Sudan is bigger than me. And uh, I have the president, uh, my president, they have to fix me because whenever I, I, if I want to go uh, left or right, they have to bring me back to, uh, to the system. So Including have, being silent? Uh, well, I don't know what you mean about silent. Uh, my work is very clear. What I'm talking, I'm talking of people, human resources. I'm talking of institutions of our government. So I will not be silent there. I will be silent for things that is outside of my ministry. You will fix us then? I will, as I said, we are contributing. Not, not fully, we are contributing. We will do our part. And Madim all will do his part. Because now, now you are doing this program. It is part of fix, fixing South Sudan. I'm sure they are not going to incite any, anything <laughs> that will divide us. Honorable you, General yeah? James Hosmai, thanks for coming to the program. Thank you, Hadi. <laughs>